Hello and welcome to my channel for another knife review. Today we're going to take a look at the Custom Knife Factory collaboration with Jake Hoback, which is the Quayback. Now most of you are familiar with Jake's original design, which is a, the Quayback. Uh, it's a very well-known knife and, and uh, it's been uh, a hit for Jake. Uh, it's a fantastic design. In my opinion, it's one of the best Quaken style folding knives ever produced. If not the best, I really love this knife. And um, I was very excited when uh, the collaboration between Custom Knife Factory and Jake Hoback was announced. Uh, we've been waiting for this knife for forever. Um, the whole idea started when uh, Jake Hoback and my collegian of Custom Knife Factory met at Blade Show in 2016. And it's taken about a year and a half, two years for the knife to be released. And finally it was released on the 1st of January 2018. So it's very fresh, very new and uh we actually appreciate the knife when we saw that in the flesh so to speak and we realized why it's taken so long because there's been a lot of changes uh although you don't really see much difference when you look at uh, the knife in front of me uh but we're gonna go to the details and tell you uh what's been changed and what custom knife factory has done to this beautiful design to make it even better Yes, I believe it's uh, it's better than the original knife, and it should be because that's the whole point of doing a collaboration. I mean, uh, two great makers like Jake and Mike come together, and they bring their own uh, skill sets and their knowledge and uh, experience and design capabilities together. So you should always get a better knife than two makers and put their minds together and work on a project together. And this is the the case here. Um, so let's get it started. I'm going to show you the, the custom knife factory Quayback first and then uh, we're going to do a side-by-side -side review between the custom knife factory Quayback and Jake Hobe Quayback, Quayback and show you a few differences and show you what has been changed from that knife to this knife and then let you decide which one you like most and um, without further ado uh, let's get the specs out of the way first. The handle length on this one is 13.2 uh, centimeters. The overall length is 22.7 centimeters. Blade thickness of 4 millimeters. And the blade steel is M390 in stone wash finished. And the knife runs on double row ceramic ball bearings. And it weighs about 175 grams. So the specs are out of the way. Let's get the advertisement out of the way as well. We're gonna come back to it later. So starting with the handle of the knife, which is full titanium with a beautiful carbon fiber inlay. I really like this design. It's been well executed. Uh, the handle itself has a, a stone wash, dark stone wash, bronze anodized, a beautiful working finish to it with that nice, dark bronze tone custom knife factory logo here a beautiful inlay I mean when you run your fingers over the inlay you don't notice anything I mean it's very flush with the handle it's been beautifully executed I really like it and if you ha if you take a quick look it's actually not easy to do uh, uh, inlay so flush and so nice like this but of course custom knife factory is you know is capable capable of doing even better than this so uh, I'm not really surprised to see that level of quality from Custom Knife Factory. They're, they're known for making fantastic knives. Uh, blackened uh, hardware and pivot that flows very well with the rest of the knife. You have that same carbon fiber inlay on the other side, as you can see. And uh, a beautiful gear shaped pivot screw that adds so much character to the knife this uh, the pocket screw you know adds that sort of industrial theme to the whole knife and it's matching with the with the dark look of the carbon fiber and the, the screws and of course the pocket clip so the the pocket clip itself is a bent titanium pocket clip but you know it's not unlike a lot of uh, other brands that you know they create a great knife then they ruin the whole look with a with a plain jane bent pocket clip or, or a wire clip which i don't really like so custom knife factory has actually done some nice milling there of course jake hoback's logo in there and they've added that uh, ceramic ball bearing 
to the end of the clip. Now, uh, this ceramic ball bearing is actually not the Todd Beck uh, ceramic style that you are familiar with. It's actually different. So in the in the Todd Beck style bearing on the pocket clip, the pocket clip is actually the the bearing actually contacts with the handle of the knife. And that bearing is, is put there to make it a little bit easier to uh, put the knife inside your pocket or take it out because that bearing actually reduces the friction and make it easier for you to, you know, to put the knife, slide the knife inside your pocket. So let me actually show you, uh, this is a Steelcraft Bodega. And if you take a close look at the pocket clip, you see that most of the bearing is actually underneath the pocket clip and it comes in contact with the frame of the knife so that that way uh, instead of having steel on a steel or, or titanium or titanium you having ceramic on titanium which uh, you know aids with getting the material of your pocket underneath as opposed to this one that the bearing doesn't even come in contact with the frame it's just there because you know because it looks good and it's got no practical use otherwise and then moving on you have this nicely milled back spacer with deep grooves uh, let me get this out of the way so as you can see the the pocket uh, the back the back spacer flows with the design of the knife very nicely it's got deep jimping and nice grooves it's a beautiful uh, pocket clip I really like how they uh, they've done the edges here it looks very well. Custom Knife Factory logo there. Inside the handle, you have these milled out pockets that actually help a great deal with reducing the overall weight of the knife because you know you take some material out of the, the titanium, which is a heavy material actually. I um, mean, not heavier than a steel, but compared to aluminium, it's much heavier. So those milled pockets are a, a, a good help to reduce the weight. The blade itself is Bowler M390. As I mentioned, it's my absolute favorite blade. Uh, blade of steel. It's it's a fantastic steel, in my opinion. It's one of the best all-round steels you can get. It's got everything, it's got fantastic corrosion resistance, it's got the, one of the best edge retentions you can ever get. You can sharpen it to uh, a mirror edge, an absolute razor edge, and uh, it can hold that edge for, for a very long time. So that's one of the reasons I, I really love the, the M390, you should too. And we're not going to go too much into the details about the steel itself. And um, you can you can check it up online if you like, there's a lot to to read about M390 and why it's one of the best steels. On the spine you have this uh, nice jimping, you know it's not extremely aggressive that digs into your finger and it's not uh, so rounded that your finger slips on it. It's right right amount of jimping in my opinion, it, it does a good job to hold your thumb in the place and um, it's not actually, uh, you know, it, it doesn't really uh, create a hot spot either. It's, it's a good jimping and of course you have the serial number on this side of the flipper tab and on the other side you have M390 you have the hoe back there and uh, this is I believe um, a code from Bible that, that Jake Hoback puts on uh, most of his designs you know um, I'm not really very religious so I don't really know much about it I only know that it's a code from from Bible that Jake uses on most of his designs so closing the blade you have nice jimping on the flipper tab that gives you a very good purchase on the flipper tab itself you know your fingers got nowhere to go and uh, it does a great job in uh, you know creating that extra grip when you want to flip the knife and really no matter how you how you do it you always get a good flip you can't really go wrong with the flipper it's nicely done and the action itself is is smooth as butter it's 
a beautiful silky smooth action it's, it's glass like now I sh I'll show you that a little bit more later um, the, the flipper tap is it's actually very interesting the way it's done the jimping here on the flipper tap uh, when you flip the knife open lines up very nicely with that jimping inside the lock bar insert and as you can see it sort of continues from the lock bar to the back of the back spacer which doubles as a finger guard so that way you get a fully jimmed sort of a finger choil and when you hold the knife that fully serrated or fully jimmed area does a fantastic knife uh, a fantastic job in keeping your finger in place so your thumb rests on top on the on the spine where the jimping is uh, your index finger ends up in the finger choil which is sort of dipped in so you get a finger rest plus the jimping on the choil and also at the back here you got this uh, rather deep and aggressive jimping so as you can see very secure in hand I'm not sure if that's been intended to be like that I mean the fact that the jimping on the lock bar insert lines up with the back of the flipper tab but if it was intended that way it's very smart if not you still have a have a great fully gym finger chawl which is a which is a which is a bonus so let's put the knife down the uh, the specs from the custom knife factory Quebec hasn't changed much to the original Hobak Quebec uh, the size the handle size the blade size um, the thickness is all the same and most of the, the changes are on the handle and a uh, few other details here and there that we're going to uh, touch on it later on. So now let me bring this original Quay back and put it next to the custom knife factory Quay back. As you can see they are very similar in shape, identical in size and on the other side as well. So not much has changed in terms of the size. But as I mentioned, uh, most of the details have been adjusted and refined by Custom Knife Factory. One more thing that I forgot to mention here is the adjustable detent, which you had on the original Quebec. Now you have it in Custom Knife Factory. Basically, what this is, uh, it allows you to adjust the detent string. So you can screw this down if you prefer a harder detent, and if you like it to be a little bit looser you can screw it back out and, uh, and then you know you can adjust it how you like so you have it on the custom knife factory version as well I believe this was uh, Jake Hoback's invention uh, correct me if I'm wrong but it doesn't really matter you have it there it's a great feature to have so let's do a quick comparison between the two knives and show you a couple of things that have been changed um, Starting from this side, as you can see on the custom knife factory, you have a, a beautiful gear shaped pivot screw that I mentioned earlier. Here, you've got the standard sort of a flat pivot screw. I very much prefer this one here because it it adds more character and and it goes very nice with the whole overbuilt industrial theme of the knife, in my opinion. And um, uh, I mean. Uh, this is more flush but it doesn't bother me it's not this is not going to dig into your finger or anything like that uh, i prefer this the pocket clip it, it clip itself has changed a lot um as you can see big differences in in the way they look but not much practical use in my opinion they they both do the job i mean to keep the knife inside your pocket securely it's just how they look which is different the only noticeable difference is if I turn them around uh, you can see the way they're bent are a little bit different so on the original one you have the contact point right here at the very beginning of the pocket clip on this one it's a little bit further back and it's got a raised lip so uh, that contact point being a bit further back makes it a little bit more difficult to raise up which means it's got a uh, stronger grip but it's all also a little bit easier to put your uh, your pocket 
material under the clip because it's already raised so uh, it's going to be a little bit easier to do other than that there's not much uh, of a practical difference between the two in terms of the, the pocket clip so on the back here custom knife factory has gone with um, full back spacer as you can see on the original one you you've got the barrel spacers instead so this one is going to be lighter obviously because there's less material and this one has a back spacer like a full back spacer uh, bear in mind you've got barrel spacers here but you, you you still cannot put a lanyard on it because the blade is actually very close to the barrel spacers and there's no room for a lanyard to go through the other difference here is in the way the internal pockets are milled I'm gonna get a flashlight here and put some light in there so you can see better um, maybe there yeah. so the internal pockets on the original Kuei back here are almost almost twice as deep as what they are in the custom knife factory version it's very difficult to show you this one um, maybe you have a better view there but trust me on that the, the millings inside the handle are much deeper in the Quebec original uh, version compared to the custom knife factory and that helps reducing the weight a little bit more so this one I have here is obviously the carbon fiber version which is going to be much lighter than full titanium uh, this one weights about 130 grams this one is 175 grams but on the uh, full titanium version of this knife uh, I believe the weight is about 150 grams which is still about 25 grams lighter than this uh, because of two reasons one the grooves on the short side and also the deeper uh, mill that pockets on the inside because you've got more materials coming off so it's obviously going to be a little bit lighter but custom knife factory uh, has decided to take out less material on the inside and that was intended because they wanted to have the knife uh, to be more true to that uh, overbuilt uh, kind of uh, philosophy and that's been done intentionally by them they wanted to have this material removed and have it more robust and and stronger so other than that there's a couple of differences in the hardware screws um, Jay Kobach is using the standard uh, hexa screws if you want to to open them you, you you're gonna have to use allen keys they are provided with uh, with the knife when you when you purchase a knife they come with uh, a set of allen keys uh, under the custom knife factory you have the sort of a more standard these days the, the torx screws most companies are using tor torx screws on the knife hardware there you have it on the custom knife factory um, i prefer torx screws because uh, almost every other knife that i own has torx screws on it and i've got the tools so it's you know it's easier for me actually to use uh, my tools on this knife compared to this because i i need to use the allen keys provided with this knife only to only on this knife I mean I can't use it for anything else pretty much the other thing is when I turn them in, around the way the screws are set on the custom knife factory version is actually very nice the screws come flush with the handle they are completely flush on this side and uh, you can't really feel anything but on this one they're kind of dipped in a little bit and I don't know if you can see it good there but the end of it you know the end of the screws are kind of rough as opposed to this one that is very nicely done completely flush even on that side now you get a better idea what I'm talking about so yeah I prefer the screws on this one completely the pocket clip on the original Quebec is a tip-up right or tip-up left carry 
but on the custom knife factory you only have the option to use it and tip up right carry there's no left carry option on it instead of the two holes you've got the custom knife factory logo obviously so you cannot use the pocket clip on the other side which I don't mind because first I'm a right-handed person but if you're a lefty um, you know it in my opinion it doesn't really matter because both of these knives are actually designed for a right-handed person because you have the short side here and the lock side on the other side so when you open the blade you know if you're a right-handed person you can easily disengage the lock, the lock bar and close the knife so having the pocket clip on that side doesn't really make the knife a left-handed knife because imagine if you had to operate with your left hand and open the the blade and then for disengaging you know it's it's not as comfortable as if the lock was on this side you still have you know, it's a kind of an awkward situation and you're most likely gonna end up using two hands so uh, you can't really argue that this would make the knife left-handed carry in my opinion it makes the show side ugly but the way Jake has done it is actually very nice so it's only two little screws there but some companies I've seen they mill out a section of it or they create like an island or uh, you know some sort of a, a milled out section for your pocket clip to see and that totally ruins the look of the knife I don't really like it this one is not too bad but I prefer most companies to either do it left-handed or right-handed some companies do it uh, but you know it's it's not a deal breaker for me let's put it that way uh, what other differences can we point out yes a little difference is in the way that the uh, the lock bar insert is is executed this is going to be very very difficult to show you I'm gonna use the flashlight one more time and hopefully we get a good focus with the camera if you look very closely on the area where the lock bar insert comes in contact with the lock face I don't know if you can see it yes probably there so if you look at the contact area you can see that the custom knife factory which is the closer one to the camera has got almost double the uh, the contact area between the lock bar insert and the lock face the, the whole back version has got less contact area almost half um, I believe that in, in a long run you, you're gonna get a better life out of these and uh, the, the custom knife factory lock face because it's got better contact area and it's probably going to be a little bit more secure also you're gonna get a, a spare lock bar insert with the custom knife factory which is good so small difference but I thought it's worth mentioning there you have it and uh, obviously the blade steels are different different as well the custom knife factory comes with M390 as I mentioned this one comes in um, CPM Kruger but um, some other versions, some other uh, models come with different steel. It depends on the year they were manufactured, or you know, it depends on the handle uh, and uh, blade setup you get. Some of them come with CTS XHP. Some of them come with CPM 20 CV. It, it really depends on on what you get. But M390 to me is the best steel, no matter what you compare it to. Uh, it's very hard to beat M390 and the good thing is custom knife factory has recently been using the M390 on, on most of the knives which is really good uh, it, it's more pricey but one thing I like about custom knife factory is that they don't cheap out on anything you know they they give you the best they can like the best material the best steel and also when you purchase a knife from them it, the knives come with a whole bunch of spare hardware uh, let me actually show you I'll take this one out of the way for a second and show you what you get when you purchase a custom knife factory you obviously get this famous uh, tricolored uh, nylon pouch you get certificate of authenticity obviously a microfiber cloth and a whole set of spare hardware which includes a spare pocket clip not many companies give you that spare pocket clip 
and a spare set of custom pivot screws. That's that's great. And also here you have full set of harbors. I mean everything you need. Uh, double row ceramic ball bearing, lock bar insert, uh, stop pin, uh, even even a detent, even an adjustable detent. You get the whole set. So that's fantastic to have. Uh, yep, obviously you get this nice sticker and the Russian chocolate. Yeah, the, the famous chocolate that <laughs> Custom Knife Factory provides with every purchase, which is nice, you know. You open it up and have a coffee with it, you're gonna enjoy it. So let's get this out of the way as well and get back to the Quayback. And another difference, which is you know something you can see, obviously it's inside. This one runs on single row steel uh, cage bearing system, and that one has, as I showed you just now, double row ceramic ball bearings. And because of that, the action on the custom knife factory is is really smooth. Now, custom knife factory is known for having some of the smoothest actions on, on the knives. They, uh, and it's kind of become something typical of the Russian companies. They do great actions for some reasons. Uh, uh, I don't really know why, uh, but they've mastered that sort of glass-like smooth. Some companies do very good actions, but the, the Russians do it absolutely beautiful. I really like the action. Now, the Hoback design, the this knife actually has a very nice action. If I show you the action on its own, it's a very good action, very smooth, easy to operate. But when you compare it to the custom knife factory version, you realize that this knife is absolutely silky smooth. Oops, let me get this out of the way. The action is fantastic, it's effortless. Oh, it's I mean, it's almost addictive. You want to sit there all day and just flip this knife open and close it. Flip it open and close it. I actually did it so much that I cut my finger because the blade just drops on your finger if, if you're not careful. And here I am actually trying to control the blade, but if you if you do it properly, there you go. It, it drops on your finger, so you have you got to be careful, have your finger out of the way. It will cut you. It's a very sharp tool and very very smooth one of the, the best actions i've seen on any knife hands down it's effortlessly dropping down on its own weight and closes beautiful action on this one of course uh, most of it is because you've got double row ceramic ball bearings as you know ceramic has uh, less friction compared to steel and you've got double row as opposed to one so there you go that's why it's uh um, it's kind of smoother If you remember I mentioned the jimping on the flipper tab on the custom knife factory Well, that's been added by custom knife factory because the original design doesn't have that jimping there Which is not a massive deal. This one does a good job uh, flipping I've never uh, felt like my fingers are slipping on it. You know It's no problem flipping this one open, but when you can have jimping, why not? I prefer to have it. And because of that jimping, as I mentioned earlier, the way it lines up uh, with the jimping on the lock bar insert, it actually gives you a, a more secure grip. And one more difference here is on the way the, uh, the finger choil is done. It's hard to see on the camera, but you can probably even notice it that the finger choil is a smaller on the original design custom knife factory has made it a little bit wider and a little bit bigger which although it might not look uh, like a big deal but when you hold the knife it makes a big difference so on this one i mean it's, it's a fairly good grip but my index finger doesn't really fall on the finger chord the way i like it I would have preferred the finger choil to be a little bit wider and a little bit further back here because uh, my finger doesn't really sit where it should but it's still a very comfortable grip I mean if you compare this knife to anything else you notice that it's a very comfortable knife but obviously there's been some refinement on this one and they've probably noticed that a uh, little bit of a hot spot there and that's why they've 
widen the, the finger tool here so you've got a more comfortable uh, finger wrist and um, your finger is not going to go anywhere it feels very more comfortable uh, very much comf uh, more comfortable compared to the original design so that's another thing I like about this and um, yeah I think I've covered pretty much all of the differences that I could remember there's nothing else that have changed between the two knife the two knives um, as far as I can remember the so custom knife factory has in my opinion done a fantastic job uh, in taking the already near perfect design of Jake Jake Hoback and uh, you know improving on it uh, adding their own touch and tweaking a few details here and there and making it to be what it is now I really uh, like and enjoy this knife uh, it's a fantastic knife and also as I mentioned they provide a whole bunch of uh, extra hardware and screws or even pocket clip uh, that's that's fantastic and this is something that I really like to see from every other company out there that is selling a knife that's priced between you know or or above three four hundred dollar mark uh, the spare screws in my opinion should be provided with every knife uh, imagine being a being a customer buying one of these knives uh, from any company and then you know when you use a knife obviously you're gonna have worn out parts you're gonna have you know damaged bits here and there and that's normal uh, so I mean don't make your customers to go through the whole claim process and, and the warranty and don't make them to send the knives in for changing a lock bar insert or don't make them wait forever just to get a bloody spare screw you know we use our knives we know how to open them we know how to change parts it's not rocket science every everyone that's into the knives these days they know how to uh, open the knives and maintain them you know clean them up put some some lubricant in there and so on and so forth so it's really good if you uh, even charge a little bit extra I mean the whole set of hardware if you take the pocket clip and the, uh, the pivot screw out of the uh, equation you know you you only providing a few screws here and there and uh, a, a set of bearings what's that gonna cost it's it's about four dollars five dollars ten dollars I don't know but if you charging three four hundred dollars do you think the customer is going to mind dishing out extra five or ten dollars of, of course not I personally prefer to pay that five ten dollars extra and having the peace of mind and having the hardware with me for the day that it, they, they might get damaged or for the day that I need to change it I don't have to go through the whole warranty claim process I can just replace it myself so that's a very great thing with custom knife factory and they've been very generous by today's industry standard to provide all of that which I really like good on them and I really wish that I see that more from from pretty much every company out there so as far as the comparison between the two knife goes uh, we're, we're pretty much done there's not much I can uh, I can add to it they're both beautiful knives uh, I'm really happy for this collaboration to have happened uh, I mean two fantastic companies come together and they work on a project together and the outcome is beautiful congratulations to both custom knife factory and Jake Hoback for bringing this knife out I really like it and really enjoy it um, just before I finish I want to quickly touch on something that I've been hearing on social media uh, Facebook Instagram that um, a lot of people are bitching about the price of the custom knife factory Quebec and they're saying that uh, because you know this knife is machined in China it should be cheaper it's, it's not made in the USA it's not made by Jake Hoback so it should have been priced lower and so on and so forth so firstly let me say that for anyone that lives outside the US like me uh, the whole made in USA thing is not all that important if you live inside the US and you want to support your local businesses I'll get it good on you there's no problem with that whatsoever but for the rest of us who live outside the USA it doesn't really matter uh, I mean I couldn't care less where the knives are made when I look at purchasing a knife I look at the quality of the knife the materials used the tolerances the details fit and finish collectability components and everything else and what I actually get for my money that's what I consider 
these are the thing that matters to me when I look at purchasing a knife and uh, not where it's made uh, there are to be honest there are a ton of crap knives that uh, are made in the US uh, I don't want to name names but you know which companies they are and also there are a ton of fantastic knives made in the US there are a ton of good knives made in China or Germany or Italy or South Africa or Russia or, or anywhere else and there are also a ton of poor quality knives from all of those same countries as well so what should matter to you as a person that is spending uh, their hard-earned money on a knife uh, sh it shouldn't be where the knives come from it should be what you're actually getting for your money uh, but if you want to close your eyes to the facts and bang on about the whole country of origin thing, well, that's up to you. I mean, you, you you know what you're doing with your money, and I don't really want to tell you what is right or what is wrong. But as a collector myself, that's how I choose what to buy. And just think about everything else that you own or you use. You know, your uh, almost all of your electronics are made in China anyway. Your iPhone is made in China. Your the, the device you're using right now to watch this video is most likely made in China too. You can go check it out if you like. Majority of your popular shoes and clothing brands are made in China or Thailand or Vietnam or, or whatever. Millions of other things that you own or use on a daily basis are also made overseas. So don't be biased when it comes to your knives and your gears because there's really not much difference. They're all products. Um, you should look at what you're getting for your money and the quality and uh, you know the fit and finish and so on and so forth not only where they come from and I think in my opinion that's the right way to choose your knives so uh, just saying that because this knife was machined in, in, in China and, and sort of assembled and finished in Russia it should be cheaper than what's made in the US no that's not correct so with all of that said, I believe that the, the custom knife factory Quebec is a fantastic knife and a great value for the money uh, considering what you're getting, you know, top material, M390 steel, all of those uh, extra hardware and, and the spare stuff that you're getting with it. And just the fact that these knives are limited production, like everything else that custom, custom knife factory makes, they are a runoff, uh, usually three to 400 knives only and they come numbered on the blade or on the handle and they come with a certificate of authenticity so they're really good collectible items and that's it for this video as far as it goes i really hope you guys enjoyed the the review so comment below and let me know what you think and don't forget to like and share the video if you think other people could you know enjoy watching this video and uh, make up their own mind about this knife or or that knife and and let me know what you think and thanks for being with me today and thanks for watching the video.